Vince Noctis. Subscribe to Vincent Valentine EX Turk channel. Hello, Marge. Music Chaos is your keynote. It's found on the X Turk. It's the fourth video on May tonight. And I'm getting really tired because I made a lot of videos. Went a lot of places, did this and did that. Did this, did that, did this. So I'm pretty really wore out. I almost got my summer workout. Haha! <laughs> I might wake up skinny, but no. Let's, get, let's just finish this video with a. Bang! So. This is actually not going to be enough theory video or continuity video or discussion video. Not even a stream right now or this and that and this other thing and this other thing and this goes right here. Who knows? Sorry. I just had to put some humor in this. Just because, well, I'm getting bored. I'm using older game footage because older game footage is really fitting for this right now because... We're going to be talking about the Final Fantasy TCG trading card game, if you don't know what TCG means. I really do hope you know what TCG is. I hope some of you guys had a great childhood and actually played, po have played Pokemon cards in the park or something like that. Or you at least grew up and you got into Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic the Gathering. Even though, I'm really, I'm more of a Yu-Gi-Oh! versus the Magic the Gathering, personal blah, 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 blah. I really hope that you at least got to play at least three of the TCGs, so you probably know trading card games as well. And trading card, you know, archetypes and, and yada 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 and all that good stuff. But no, this is not a stream or anything like that. Just to let you know, this is not if you're really wondering about that stuff. So, don't, you know, or anything like that, so... I don't think I'm going to be mentioning that in here, but anyways, this is actually with the Final Fantasy TC Trigger. I have a prediction of the next structure that they can be. Some people think it's good. I mean, yeah, they, they do release three structure decks at a time, though. Unlike Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh always release two structure decks. And I think Magic the Gathering does the same thing. Quote me if I'm wrong in the comments, because I don't play Magic the Gathering. So, quote me if I'm wrong if they don't. Uh, release two structure decks at the same, you know, at the same time. Because I know Yu-Gi-Oh does. They release two rival structure decks, whether it's a, a rival characters from the TV show or just like rival decks. Like I can't remember. I'm trying to remember. Like back in like, see, I think it was in like 2000. Yeah, 2007 when they had the Dragons War versus the Zombie Madness. You know, they put they put two arc totally different archetypes. To fight each other, pretty much. So if you want to get started in Yu-Gi-Oh, you just buy a structure like you don't even have to put no new cards in it because they put, give you a complete deck. I mean, they will ask you to add cards later on so you can actually play tournaments. But for like fun play, you got that. Uh, and Final Fantasy does things differently. They release three structure decks. Now I think that they ran out of ideas for some of these structure decks because reasons, just because reasons. I think they ran out of stuff, so I think they, you know, like the Titus one, it, the Titus Final Fantasy X structure deck is the water structure deck. The, I don't know what the lightning one is because I haven't read up on it, but I, I bought the Final Fantasy VII one, and that's Earth and Fire. And the game play like Magic the Gathering pretty much. So they do with everything in all elementals, you know. I think the only thing that can make the Final Fantasy VII deck fire is the fact that they got Vincent Valentine in there. And Vincent Valentine, well, there's two reasons why he's wearing red. He's either a red mage character or he's another final elemental besides the uncannon character Genesis. And I have to put uncannon because Genesis is uncannon. Even though some of the cards they have are uncanny, like the Bahamut Fury form, that was only exclusively to Crisis Core, yet they put in the trading card games. So, that don't really... Canon does not really matter. But the point I'm trying to say, my prediction is that they're the next structure deck, at least one of them will be structure deck Noctis. Because Final Fantasy 15 is popular enough now, because they did all the popular ones, like they did Final Fantasy 10, 7, and 13, and... Even though people hate 13, you got to admit it's well known more than 8, 9, you know, and 12. You know. So the next one would have to be 15. 
And the archetypes I can see is dark and light. Now how I can see the dark is they may put some villain cards in it. They may put some villain cards. Now in the original structure decks, they didn't put no villain cards. It was all the heroes. It was all the heroes from the set. And then some support tech, some tactics, and Final Fantasy tactics, and Halloween costume chibi things that are support cards. Again, I have not played Magic together, but I imagine like how it is in Yu-Gi-Oh! where there's some cards that really don't look like they fit the archetype, but what they do is they, what they end up doing is adding that card in set arc, you know, it's adding the cards to help the archetype. Let's just say, um, I'm trying to think, like, you know, you do the original Dark World deck, the 2005 one, and you have three plague spreader, spreader zombies when they're zombie cards and not dark worlds, but they really help dark worlds. Kind of like that kind of thing. You know, the Halloween chibi costume thing things are actually supports. But other than that, I've not actually seen one of these hero decks, even watched openings on YouTube, even watched Final Fantasy Peasants opening of these decks, and not one villain card was ever in there. You had to open booster packs for the villains. So, you get all the heroes. So, I'm guessing the reason why it's fire and earth is because most cards are earth in Final Fantasy VII. Like, Barret would be considered earth, and then Vincent would be considered fire, which you only get three basic Vincent Valentine cards. But, it don't matter basic or not. I guess that's how they do it. And, as I said, the archetype would be mostly light and dark because Noctis is light. Now, they might put dark in this because if they don't put Arden in here, you end up getting from Booster Pack, they're more likely going to put Ravis because Ravis was technically not a bad guy. He's just an anti hero. He has his own agenda and his own goals. And it was taken away when he transformed into Ontario. But that is a different story altogether. So. Because Ravis works for the Nephilim Empire, he'd instantly be a dark elemental type. So if they throw Ravis in this one, then in a might, they would make the deck half dark and half light. So Noctis, Prompto, and Ignis would be, and Gladiolus would end up being light. You know, Luna Freya is going to end up being a light, you know, elemental. And I'm pretty sure they're going to put Luna Freya in the, the Noctis structure deck because. It just makes more sense to do it that way. Um, you know. So they're going to put that in there. Well, they might put RNA because RNA turns good. But before, she worked with the Nephilim Empire. Even though she didn't turn into a demon in the game, she did work for the Nephilim Empire. So that would make her a dark type. And then you, you got to balance that with your light type like Noctis, Prompto, Gladiolus, Ignis. And Luna Freya, and they might throw King Regis in there, and Nyx, which would be light, considerably light, as well. And they might put on Rama and Shiva, because Shiva's actually changed into a good guy. And versus, she's supposed to be a bad guy. But in this 15's canon, Shiva is actually good. Gentiana is actually a light, the messenger. Even in Shiva form, she's still good. You know, and Rama's still good because Rama never fights you. Titan would be considered bad on the fact that you had to fight him as well as Leviathan. But nonetheless, you know, nonetheless, in the car, train car games, it's mostly going to be light and dark types. They will still be the same support. Like, they'll still have the chibi characters that are nothing but back support. And they'll probably give you three Noctuses just like they did give you three clouds and now the cards will be holographic or rare because in the Final Fantasy TCG how it works is starter decks and structure decks don't give you hollows you got to get that in packs to make it ultra rare and I guess it's kind of a good start for the game because I remember when I, when I started first playing Yu-Gi-Oh only the main card was ultra rare holographic but all the other cards were common for the good purposes of, I don't know, making shit actually rare. So I guess that's what they're trying to do on that. And then maybe later on if the game takes 
you know, it, it gets so good that they start selling the TCG stuff at Barnes and Nobles because that's where they, that's most likely where TCG stuff ends up being good first. Then they'll get, you know, I mean, they'll start with Clutch's Cash, but if it ends up being so good that they start selling structure decks at Barnes and Nobles of packs and game takes off or the game gets collected, highly collected, then, you know, they might actually release more hollow decks like Yu-Gi-Oh! did. But nonetheless, the point I'm trying to say is that my prediction the next deck is going to be a Noctis deck with Light and Dark. And it might be an OP deck considering they do take in strife of the of the character's powers in the game. You know, with Magic the Gathering, you know, with Magic the Gathering gameplay in the TCG, you know, they may take and strife the character's powers too. And let's be quite honest with ourselves. Noctis is overpowered. Remember, like I said in my art, why Arden was an easy boss, final boss battle, I said how Noctis easily defeated Arden. Remember, Noctis has the power where he can do anything he wants now. Noctis pretty much is more than just a king of light. He's a god of light now. I'm pretty sure the Noctis cards in there's got to at least be 9,000. And you're going to have to do a lot of tributing or what they call tributing in this game. You know, or, you know, probably sacrificing in this game just to, in the TCG just to play the Noctis cards. At least to play one of them. Now, they'll probably make one in the pack, the new pack at the time, that's a legendary that wipes out your uh, your opponent's whole field because Noctis is overpowered. Let's just be realistic. I love Noctis as a character, but he is overpowered. That's just on, that's on Square Enix. And again, that's what normal with that Chapter 13 and why Tabata had to make some rearrange changes, but even then it wasn't enough because Noctis became... OP, he became kind of marriage suish after he had his meeting with Bahamut. So they'd make him, they'd make that, they'd probably, the deck would probably be more expensive on the fact that not, you know, in the actual TCG for Final Fantasy tournament circuit, if they do have one, they choose to, they do choose to have one. Over here, if it gets big enough, then Noctis cards will pretty much be the strongest cards of the game. On the fact that in the game, in the Final Fantasy game, Noctis is the strongest hero by far, taking out the strongest guys in his team. And the fact he has the power to rewrite reality right after he gives his life to Muhammad and he beats Arden and ends the Star Scourge. So I'm just saying that's the why they'd be in the next deck because if they were choose to have tournaments. Uh, for the TCG, it would be a little different than you think, because in this part of the TCG, in this part of the TCG, um, Noctis would be the strongest card, even stronger than what, what Cloud is currently in the TCG. You know, and I still want to do a whole debate, but um, stream up. Uh, who's stronger, Cloud or Noctis. I still want to do that, since now I understand both people's powers. You know, I can make sound arguments, but nonetheless, I have to be quite honest. It's like, it'd be the strongest deck by far, so it'd be real, it'd go up from 20 to 23, or if they if it takes off, like I said, if it gets sold in Barnes & Noble's, it'll probably go down to $9, except the Noctis deck would be 14, because Noctis is going to be end up the most powerful, you know, deck in there. Now I don't know very much about the Final Fantasy TCG. I just collect the Final Fantasy TCG and open it for you guys who watch my stuff, just you know, to bring joy to my fan to my fan base. That's the only thing I do with this. But other than that, it's like, you know, let's just say I do learn learn, learn the game. I'm pretty sure Noctis is going to be one of those cards. If I could compare it to Yu-Gi-Oh, pretty much like a Chaos Emperor Dragon type of OP. And that's because they base the Final Fantasy TCG off the actual game. So, characters are just as strong in the TCG as they are in their game. So, And I know how powerful Noctis is. He's Mary Sueish, especially after getting powers from Bahamut. But also, I just want to say, may the crystal be with you. Tell me what you think. This is just a prediction. 
uh, what's the next FFTCG opening that they're gonna do? I mean, I mean, structure that they're they're gonna sell.